Hello and welcome my full wheels of cheese stacked on top of each other into the shape of a giraffe. It's Chris here and we're playing some more chimps for you guys. And of course from the thumbnail you probably knew, we're playing with a special tower today. We're playing with the sniper. Now if you notice the first thing about this map is, oh crap Chris, why would you pick a map where you can't even see the entire map with your snipers? There's no spot in the entire map that you can see everything. Oh wait a second. Wait a second. You can live on top of these crates? Well, yeah, you can, bro. Yeah, you can. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to be using uh, snipers only today, which means it's going to be a pretty long journey for us. Snipers are one of those really, really weird towers that they start off really weird. They don't really work well as like a starting tower or anything like that. But they do blossom. All right, just like a beautiful, stanky flower into something beautiful by the end of this game here. Now, in addition, we've decided to use a hero that's basically just going to keep the balloons on the screen for a little bit longer. So we're going to be using Pat today to make sure that that happens. Now, we've got enough money here, and I think the best thing for us to do is just go for a double sniper play. Now, please keep in mind that there are many ways that we, uh, or many places that we can put our snipers here. But the main thing is, is the only thing that actually gets in the way is the crusher. So these are going to be like my main two snipers, I guess. And then we're going to be just piling up the rest of these snipers over here, just kind of all over the place. So I should mention that I actually did a, this is the first time ever that I did a practice run. And by practice run, I mean that I did a non-recorded version of this first part of the game here. I wanted to make sure that I could do a start because I failed on Monkey Lane. I failed on uh, In the Loop and I failed on another map where I just could not get the snipers even started up in here. And then I thought about it and I'm like, dude, one advantage to this map in particular is the Crusher. All right, that is another activated ability that we can use when poop hits the fan. I wanted to make sure we try to stop poop from hitting the fan as much as we possibly can. Here we go, we barely survived round nine. We're already on round 10 here and we're gonna have to start using the Crusher here immediately. The good news is after level 10, we should be able to afford Pat, which is gonna completely change the game in our favor. Pat's important because he automatically pops lead balloons. He's going to give us a pretty good amount of popping power here. Um, just by smacking the balloons. Um, and I think the main thing, though, is he keeps the Moabs on the screen near the late game. Just smacking Moabs, smacking BFBs, or smacking whatever. Let's go for that Crusher. And we go for that Pat. So here we go. I want to put Pat in a spot where he can attack the balloons as they walk through here once. As they loop around and go through here one more time. And then still be able to reach the balloons as they're about to leave to stun them for their last second. That being said, now we've got our snipers in action, and one thing you want to do with snipers in almost all situations is put them on strong. All right, I'll say almost because it's not completely true. We will do some targeting later on um, once we get later on and everything because it gets wild. But for now, the best thing for us to do is put these guys on strong until we get our majorly awesome upgrade here. The middle path shrapnel shot. So, by far, I gotta admit, guys, the shrapnel shot is, in my opinion, the way to make snipers work. But when you want to put this guy on strong, no, 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 no. Change that completely, and we're gonna start putting this guy on first. So, if you guys don't know how this works, we gotta talk about the damage aspect of snipers really quickly um, before we go too deep in here, so we can understand what these guys do. Um, basically, a layer is a damage, if that put if that makes any sense. So, um, unlike a catapult monkey, which can go through. Um, many balloons individually the sniper will attack one balloon but do damage to it Let's take a green down to a red and and or if you get a full metal jacket it pops through four layers or four damage of balloon um and this is extra especially important because you can knock through um four layers of balloon but actually pop more than four balloons in itself for example if you start with a rainbow you're gonna pop through the rainbow you're also gonna pop through the two zebras and the two blacks and the two whites all down into pinks and or yellows and that's why this guy is so cool, because he can do damage in really weird ways and just kind of chop through balloons in kind of unusual ways that don't necessarily make that much sense. So we've got a shrapnel shot here. We're going to go for the even faster firing, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to just save up for it. We're going to try to get a semi-automatic rifle and a... I'm going to chop this crap. And a... Uh, uh, just basically all the way up to a fifth here as fast as possible. I think that's the best sniper for us, in my opinion. This guy is the king of all snipers, the elite defender. He's got cam detection, he's got shrapnel shots so he can hit a lot of different balloons, and he shoots ridiculously fast over here. All of that leading together means you are going to be powerful. But if I'm not mistaken, we need to go back in time and think about uh, some of the monkey knowledge we were talking about. And if I'm not mistaken, like I said earlier, if I'm not mistaken, elite defender makes requires you to lose lives to actually 
become uh, a better tower or shoot faster. But Monkey Knowledge can get rid of that requirement. But sadly, we are on chimps, which means that requirement is back in play. Uh, so we do not get that extra bonus popping power um, for this elite defender, which is upsetting. Don't get me wrong, but it is not an impossibility for us. We could still make it happen. So here we go. We're going to rock through around 27, 28, 29, and 30. And we're probably going to skip to around 40 because we're going to be able to afford our big boy right here, the semi-automatic rifle. Once we get this guy, things are going to go our way, my friend. So here we go. We're going to go for the quick crusher here. Boop. Just some of the balloons. Use it when you need it. Um, we don't have any lead pop here except for Pat. Pat is our lead popper. And I'm okay with it, man. He does a good job of lead pop power. I could easily pop a sniper in here with full metal jacket or something as well. But that is not what I want to do. I want to focus on the bottom path here. Because I want to make sure not only do I get uh, the popping power required. I want to make sure I also get lead popping power for later. And a fourth tier does not get lead popping power anymore. The fully auto rifle does not instantly pop lead. But the fifth tier does. So... Now we've got some pops going. Let's skip to round 40 and see how this goes. So as you might be able to tell, we are doing quite fantastic so far. We've got our cam detection. We've got uh, balloon popping power. The lead pop bar is like a little bit weird, but once we get through uh, Pat here, we do start popping leads. And we already can afford our fully auto rifle. Only 4,500 bucks. Boom! It increase our popping power a lot. And we're actually pretty reasonably close to an elite defender for $15,000. Okay. We're probably going to get the guy like 45 or something like that. Like, it's, it's that quick, guys. This is just a good tower. He pops anywhere on the screen. Doesn't matter where you put him, basically, except for blocking walls and things like that. And uh, it's just a powerhouse, dude. I really, really, really like the fully auto rifle and the elite defender. They are my favorite snipers in the game. If you're going to pick a sniper that you need to, need to use, I would recommend those guys. Some people would argue with me and say that the elite, uh, the elite sniper is probably better. Mm -mm. Yeah, okay, if that's that's your uh, that's your opinion, man. But uh, for me, I always go Elite Defender whenever I can. He's just a powerhouse, dude. He's hard to beat. So I should mention really quickly that if I sound like I'm stumbling in my words, or if I just said stupid today, or I, I suck at making videos and stuff like that, I apologize, my friends. I got really, really, really bad sleep last night. Um, I slept, I fell asleep on the couch, so I was not in trouble or anything like that with the wife or nothing like that. I just, um... For whatever reason, I've really been into this stupid, ridiculously stupid prison show on Netflix. It's so bad, but so entertaining at the same time. I'm usually not a sucker for reality TV, but uh, for whatever reason, prison shows, they uh, they suck me in. Because I've always been interested in like the psychology aspect of, 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 of people in general. And some of the most interesting people in the world are surprisingly in prison. As weird as that is. Um, but the process of them going through that and getting all this information and everything, is just, it was really interesting. I don't even remember the name of it. I think it's 60 Days In or something like that. I'm not uh, recommending it to anybody, but I will just say that I've been I've been intrigued by it. Um, I used to watch, even even though it was sort of weird, and so, um, like, it was mildly creepy. I even went back and I, I watched this, like, uh, juvie prison show, and I was like, what could make, like, a 13-year-old need to go to jail like how bad could they possibly be and whose fault is it is it the kid's fault or is it the parent's fault and it looked like nine times out of ten it was definitely the parent's fault uh they just either weren't around or they were not helpful to them or just bad parents in general didn't understand how to punish people and things like that properly and uh that's how these kids ended up there but there was always like one out of ten there was just like something wrong with them man like something in their brains something in the development just did not work properly so, anyways, we've got $26,000 here, and, uh, you know, the first thing you're thinking is, Chris, you just want to get that elite defender? You've been, you've been talking him up all game. Is he the way to go? Well, I mean, we've got options to ourselves. We should mention that. If we've got three fifth-tier snipers to go for, there's the Crypt Mobus 36k plus previous costs. We're talking about at least 45000 Not even close to that. But elite sniper. Only about $20,000 here and a few chunks of change. We could actually afford the elite sniper already. But I do believe that the better tower is still going to be that elite defender for me. So we're going to buy him, and we're going to live with him. And you're going to see the power of all of these, uh, of this big boy right here uh, working working together, I guess. There he is. Now, what do we want to get next? Oh, that's a great question. So uh, I know for a fact that one of the main weaknesses of this sniper is not just regen blooms, but a specific round of regen blooms. You guys know what it is? What is it? Know what it is? Know what it is? Yes. Come on, think about it for a quick second. What's the worst regen level of the game? Round 76. Now, there's other rounds that can be problematic, too. Like, round uh, 79 can be pretty bad in some situations, depending on your tower loadout and stuff like that. Um, uh, 
And I mean, there's a couple other rounds as well. It can be kind of like, weirdly, stupidly difficult for like no reason sometimes. But those are the, that's the main one that for me, I always I am like fearful of round 76. And I know for a fact the elite defender is really, really, really bad against round 76 because this guy's not powerful enough to actually take down the ceramic down into nothing. So he keeps attacking the first balloons and the first balloons and the first balloons, then everything just starts regening and regening and regening, and eventually they just turn into this giant festival of garbage festival. So, oh crap. Oh crap, did I lie to you guys earlier? Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. Um. Okay. This is what we've been doing. I am mistaken. I, I believed that the elite defender was able to pop lead balloons. But evidently, I am wrong, my friends. I am very, very wrong. So we're going to have to crush some of these leads. Let this guy take care of the rest here. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. I, um, you know what? Supply elite defender anyways. Let's just get it. We got a bouncing bullet. We go supply drop. And elite defender's only a couple grand away. But that that makes me afraid, actually. Um, Dang. Whoo, boy. Okay, okay. This is freaking me out a little bit. That blew my mind. So, uh, the reason why I, I, I thought or I believed that the Elite Defender was able to pop leads is because he used to be able to. Um, and then randomly they decided to nerf, I thought it was just the fourth tier because he was too powerful on deflation mode. Basically, you built one of those guys and he popped all the way through, uh, round 60. No problem. Just build one tower, beat any mode, you win! Deflation! Defeated in one foul swoop. All right, but but uh, I did not realize that they also changed the elite defender to not be able to pop leads either. So that that throws me in for a bit of a cookie twist here. All right. Um, so with that cookie twist, I don't know what we're gonna do. But for now, I've got an elite sniper, and I believe since oh man, see, uh, oh god, oh god, I'm confused already. I'm usually very confident in what I'm doing and understanding, and and I, I told you guys some stuff that I already know is false, so that makes me feel a little bit bad here. But I will admit, snipers are not my forte. These are not what I would consider my favorite towers in the game. I barely ever use snipers. Not that they're bad. I just always find other towers more exciting or more fun or more interesting to use. The infinite range aspect always threw me off a little bit here. But we are winning. That's the main thing. We're doing just fine here. So we've got our elite sniper with large caliber. And I, I think I believe that the large caliber is going to be better for us against DDTs rather than a faster shooting. Um... So we're going to go with that and hope that that's going to work out for us. But now we already need to start saving up and going for our, our next big guy here. So I believe... Let's think about this really quickly. So uh, what's weird about snipers is it usually doesn't matter too much where you put them. But when you get shrapnel shot, which I've got basically kind of shrapnel shot here, but not really because it turned into a bouncing bullet. But I've got shrapnel shot here and my other sniper will be a shrapnel shot. And when you have a shrapnel shot, it actually manage, uh, matters where you put them, where you position them. For example, if we put our sniper right here and I put him on last or strong or something like that, he would shoot through, hit the moabs, and the shrapnel would spray through them upwards into other moabs coming out. Specifically, if he's attacking first and or the strongest first moab, which is usually what he's going to be doing. But if I put him over here, for example, that shrapnel shot might spray not into other moabs directly, but kind of off into the wilderness here. So it's tough for me because I really don't have that many positions where I can put these guys. Now I've got a couple here, a couple here, blah, 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 blah. And if I manage to put him down here, then I'm losing a lot of position where I can attack here. And with a fifth here, I don't want that. So upsettingly, I think I'm going to put him right here and hope that my most last and strong attacks kind of shoot through the moabs and might miss a little bit to the left here but still for the most part would shoot this way then in addition if he kind of comes over here and everything i can still attack them and do weird things to them so i don't know if it's going to go perfectly and i know position doesn't matter too much but i just want to touch on that really quickly because it might affect us a little bit later on but anyways here we go guys this is where it comes down we're going to go deadly precision which don't forget this does uh 20 damage per shot it's interesting that they change from layers to damage to whatever the heck they want to whenever they feel like it. Ninja Kiwi loves to confuse us here. Oh, 76. How we doing? How we doing? With a pat. Okay, we do take number on 76, and that looked really, really easy. But I promise you guys, if I didn't have this elite defender or elite sniper, I would have lost. All right? I promise you. He's just, he's bad against round 76. But all it takes is one little, one little fifth tier sniper to change the game completely. 
Um, I guess one other thing to talk about really quickly before we get too deep in here is why have I not been using this ability right here? Well, it's chimp. You know what this stands for? No, wait, I lied. I was gonna say I was gonna say something different, but that's that's selling. You know what the I stands for? Income. Income. There's no I in we. Okay. There's no I in Monopoly. You know, there's no I in a lot of things, but there's specifically no I in. Well, there is an eye in chimps, which means we get no eye. And we don't get to grab any crates. If you didn't see that, that crate was worth zero dollars, my friends. So this upgrade right here is normally not too bad if you get them in a normal game mode. But in a game mode like this, it just does not matter. It's basically worthless. So uh, I should mention really quickly, we've been doing fantastic since we've got our two snipers here. We've had no issues. Bloons are basically getting popped by the time they get to Pat Fusty over here. And that's just great for us. And we're about to change things in our favor even further. So we're going to go for a deadly precision. We're going to go for that main moab. And with a main moab, you can decide whether you want to go faster shooting or for a shrapnel shot. Faster firing will be better against a single target. Um, while the uh, shrapnel shot will be better against multiple targets. And if you look at anything kind of long term here, I'm not too worried against the bad. Um, or about the bad in general. I'm more worried about just round 98. Or even like DDTs and stuff like that. So I think my best bet is probably to go shrapnel shot. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my cross path here and let him ride it out. Now we're in pretty deep already. Uh, so it should be mentioned that we are already almost to getting all three fifth tier snipers at this point. So this guy's on first right now, which is exactly the opposite of what we want to do. Targeting is important here. I've got him on elite. And now we could change this guy to elite targeting as well. But I believe that that is a mistake, my friends. I believe it is better to leave this guy on first. This guy on strong and or maybe elite. Uh, and this guy you can leave on elite and or first. And I believe this guy's probably better on first as well, if you ask me. So we're going to do that. We're going to change him to first. Um, first. One other thing that you could do, even though it's really, really interesting here, is you could change this guy and this guy to last if you were not on chimps mode because monkey knowledge will increase your sniper's attack speed if you put them on last, which is really cool in general. Um, but sadly, again, not on chimps, or uh, on chimps, it doesn't matter, because we don't know monkey knowledge, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, here we go, Cripple Moab time, baby. Woo! Here we go! So, Cripple Moab, if you guys have not seen Cripple Moab, is pretty cool, because he's gonna allow us to make the big change here. He is going to make it so, uh, not only is he gonna hurt the mobs a lot, but if my other snipers manage to attack these mobs as well, they, it'll get extra damage. The Cripple Moab cripples that Moab, immobilizes them for longer, and they take extra damage from all other attacks. So snipers are actually a really interesting set of towers here. They've got kind of all the bases covered. We've got our Moab popper. We've got kind of our support sniper, if you if it makes any sense. We've got our kind of blue popper here. Um, that's cool. That's really cool. But now we have to decide what do we want to get besides these guys. We've got 16 more rounds. We've got thousands of dollars to play around with. What do I want to build? I could build some main mobs, slow them down a little bit. I could go supply drops if I want to make zero money and be stupid about things. Or I could go, mostly, fully auto rifles with large caliber or fully auto rifles with, with shrapnel shot. And in this situation, I think fully auto rifles with large caliber might be our best bet. Because that's going to give us that lead popping power. Um, but the problem here is that we don't get cam detection if we do that. So it's like, ugh, no matter what I do... It's like, we've got problems here, my friends. The other alternative is that we could go large caliber bouncing bullets. That will give me my camo detection and be able to pop through uh, DDT layers as well uh, and still be able to pop some of the balloons. So I was thinking uh, about a combo, basically. I want to get probably some bouncing bullets, some shrapnel shot uh, fully out rifles, some other crap, and just kind of see how this goes. But because I am still worried about DDTs the most for now, I'll be buying a couple of of these bouncing bullet snipers. So we're gonna go bouncing bullets with large calibers. And of course, for the most part, I wanna put these guys whenever possible on um, these crates here. See how many snipers we can fit in general on these crates. I think you can only fit two snipers per crate, basically. Um, I mean, there might be some other way to fit like three on here, but it, like, dude, it's, it's really tight up here. And you cannot put things on uh, uh, cars or anything like that. There's no other places to really put things that are um, superbly good, but, uh, there are places where you can get a decent amount of, uh, space on the map to shoot. You know, like, this is not too shabby. Let's put one there. I think I'm gonna put one, uh, eh, 
love this, but at least I can shoot them as they walk in and as they leave. And I think no matter what, you're going to have something to shoot in this spot right here. Because there's always going to be blooms coming in, basically. All right, and that's probably all the snipers that I'm going to need for today. So uh, let's just start building them. Um, we're going to go for another bouncing bullet, large caliber, and another bouncing bullet, large caliber. That's going to be where I'm going to start and to see how DDTs are going to happen, man. Oh, I'm a little afraid, not going to lie. Round 90 shouldn't be too bad, but it'll gauge um, our ability to defend later on as well. Round 93 and round 95. Ooh, the painful rounds. Again, let's get back to targeting. Strong. I could change him to uh, Elite if I want to, but I think Strong is probably a better thing for me right now. This guy, I'm still going to leave him on first. I want to kill the balloons. And this guy, I want to leave him on first for sure, because I want to be able to hit all the, the ceramic balloons and everything. One problem with Elite is it tends to hit a kind of combo factor of Moebs and ceramics and leaves way too many ceramics on the screen for me. It's just like kind of upsetting that that's going on. These guys, I'm going to leave them all on first because I want them to be my ceramic poppers, and that's it. Ooh, look at those DDTs. Oh, that was beautiful. All right, so actually, I am not that afraid of DDTs if we're going to take those guys down that freaking easily, boys. I think our major issue right now is definitely these ceramics, so let's get some ceramic pop power up in here. And I think the easiest way is a shrapnel shot, semi-automatic, fully auto rifle uh, sniper here. Don't forget that these guys are reasonably expensive. They're not cheap. It's not a cheapo, uh, cheapo tower here. Um, every upgrade is reasonably expensive, basically. Um, sometimes I gauge upgrades based on, like, their last cost. Like, for example, a tax shooter, I would look at the city and I'd be like, Oh my god, it's a $50,000 tower. And it's only because, you know, you spend, what, four or five grand on top of that to make this happen? But every single upgrade for the sniper is just, like, extra expensive. Three grand, three grand, three grand, three grand, four grand, whatever. It's like, these things are just pricey once you get to the thirds and fourth tiers. So we go. Fully auto rifle is up right now. Um, we're still doing pretty good on round 92. 94 will be another good test for us because it's the, like, total balloon, balloonage kind of coming out right now. And then round 95, based on round 90, I'm not too afraid, but you just never know. You know, 95 could be that, like, super painfully stupid round. So, uh, unless I need to spend money, I'm not going to spend it until round 95. See how we're doing against the DDTs. And then if we are worried about DDTs, I'll build a few more of these guys. If we're not worried about DDTs, oh, yeah, that looked good. I'm going to build more of these shrapnel shot little rifles. I think they're going to be better against the balloons than just about anything else that I can build, I think. I think. Oh, it's tough to know. I mean, there's so many different cross paths and upgrades and targetings and all that stuff kind of combined together here so it can be a little tricky on which upgrades are the best to go for but um no matter what we're buying we're doing damage that's for sure okay round 94 this is a big balloon level by the way also we have not been using passability at all yet we have not needed it yet so uh i guess we're gonna start using it you know he's got the hug which i'm gonna try to stay away from unless like a oh my god is on the screen or something like that because against a single oh my god he's gonna be great against a group of oh my gods Probably fine, but against mobs and things like that, like, no. No, he's just not worth it, dude. Uh, whenever he hugs, he gets rid of his, uh... I probably should have saved that for run 95. Dang. Okay, we'll probably get it back before run 95 anyways. This is a pretty long, long time here that we have to deal with these blooms. These guys are the farthest getting blooms, I think, yet. Getting around this loop here, but they still got one more loop and another loop to go through before they're gonna sneak through our screen. Okay. See how we're doing. Shrapnel shot is randomly shooting forward somehow. Don't know how that's working, but all right. And we do get our abilities back. See how we're doing. I already used Pat's ability here pretty early. Mm, don't forget, Pat does not have cam detection, so we cannot specifically hit these DDTs. Um, and there's no decamalization aspects either with these snipers. All right, let's see how we're doing here. Um, it's definitely a little bit painful to look at right now. I mean, it's a slow process. Down to the last few-ish DDTs. Three left. Three left, two left, one left. And we take down all the DDTs. It looks like all the rest of these mobs here shouldn't be an issue. Once you get down to regular balloons, we have no major issues. And now that I know that I can... Oh, crap. They're still getting pretty far. Oh, that scared the crap out of me. Now that we know that we're doing a pretty good job here, I think I'm going to go for more shrapnel shotage. Fully out of rifle. Feeling good. And then we got these two guys here. I guess you know what I should do? We should get one more Moab uh, slow down. Let's get another main Moab here. And with the main Moab this time around, I'm going to go for the fast firing and even faster firing. I'm going to put a bunch. Of... Let's do elite. We haven't done very much elite targeting. Let's do that today. See how he's going to do. Um, He's not maiming Moabs yet, but uh, soon he will be. And I think it's going to help us out a lot when he does. Might even help us out against the DDT, surprisingly. You know, just like slow him down a little bit and run 99 or whatnot. 
Okay, uh, I did not use Pat's ability here, and that could cause me some chaos. Round 96 is uh, beefier than round 94. Much beefier. Uh, it's a slow process. We're gonna shoot, swap this guy to first for a little while. I want to be able to hit these Boabs in the front, take him down. We got more time to deal with these uh, random Zomagads now. And it looks like snipers coming in clutch here, baby. Did you guys realize you could beat chimps with sni with snipers alone? Come on, come on, and a hero. Come on, come on. Is that really possible? That's kind of absurd if you really think about it. You gotta be wrong. This is a reasonably easy map, but still, with snipers, come on. All right, here we go. We get the main Moab. Um, I think I'm gonna swap back to a shrapnel shot semi-automatic here, and I think that's good. Um, we'll leave him. You know what? Randomly, I'm gonna leave this guy on strong. I'll swap him to first if I need to. But oh, this guy. Oh, he's on elite. I don't know if I want that. I'm gonna swap him back to first as well. We're gonna leave everybody on first. I do not want him to pop all these oh my gods. I'd much rather have, have him pop all the BFBs first, and then move on into the oh my gods. Um. Okay, so we popped a lot of these BFBs. Not quite enough of them. We're gonna do a quick hug on his oh my god, and I'm gonna swap this guy back to strong because I want to stop the oh my gods. Um, I don't want to pop them, but I want to stop the Zomai Gods as well before they get too far on the map. Looks like things are going pretty well overall. Uh, it's still a very big amount of balloons on the screen right now. Uh, we're going to use Pat's other ability to smack him real quick, and we're going to slurp in this Zermagurd. Hug it. Okay, takes a little while to get it going, but we do get it going. A lot of balloons still on the screen here. All right, we got to spend every money, every single dollar we got. Another fully auto rifle is popping into existence here. Balloons are getting pretty far on the screen. Uh, we popped all the Zoma Gods as well. We gotta move this guy back to first. Alright, and Pat's gotta use his ability as well. Oh my god, round 98. You know this is gonna be a pain here, guys. Let's slow this down a little bit. We got... They're kind of randomly sparse throughout the map here, which is kind of interesting. Okay, they're getting far, though. Three more-ish reinforced BFBs right now. Okay, Pat, slow him down, slow him down. Slow him down, Pat. Keep him on the screen, keep him on the screen. Getting to the very end here, but Pat stops them in their tracks. And there we go. This is looking good. These are regular balloons now, not reinforced balloons anymore. These are the Zoma God balloons that were left over from before. We move this guy back to strong. Stop these BFBs. And it looks like our, I don't know if it was our positioning or our play style or our targeting or what, but we were successful in taking down round 98. Now all we got to do is beat round 99, baby. Woo! All right, so we're going to use Pat's ability kind of early here. Um, it's going okay. It's a slow death for these guys, but they're still dying. Good news is they're all kind of getting damaged all the same amount here, instead of, like, just attacking the first one or something like that. And we do. We take down run 99 with ease, and now all we got to do is take down one last balloon, my friends. The bad. And this is where this guy really comes into play. The cripple Moab is going to cripple the crap out of this thing, making all of the rest of my towers do more damage here. Uh, oh, I guess we should probably buy this. Because why the heck not? I will use Pat's ability and probably hug here. Whether I hug his oh my god or a DDT or whatever the heck I, I hug. Let's see if I can hug it. I'm just going to spam it. Spam that hug ability. Come on. Speed it up a little bit. How we doing? How we doing? Pretty good. The bat's probably going to get popped in this circle right here, which is, is like only 25% through the map, man. Uh, there we go. All right. So the hug is going to come into play as well. All the DDTs are dead. Basically instantaneous right here. Everything is gotta die here. If we can take down 98, we can easily take down two Zoma Gods a quarter way through the map. And we get a beautiful, beautiful pink tag here, my friends. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for getting me through this uh, wonderful, wonderful sniper journey here. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you press that like button. Make sure you subscribe. And of course, have a super duper delicious day.